So anyway, I'm going to start on the exhaust ports here and what I'm doing, let me see if I can show you guys a little better. What I'm doing is I got a, a pipe, a piece of pipe that, that I'm going to use to build my header and uh, I noticed that the ID basically fits the gasket exactly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gasket to scribe some marks as a visual reference so that I can uh, bring, bring these exhaust ports out a little bit to, to meet that, that diameter basically. Um, so I probably don't need to bring the exhaust uh, ports out that large. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going to kind of open up the face of them and make sure it's a smooth transition. And all I'm doing is using a, a scribe, pointy sharp scribe to scribe a line around the inside of the gasket. And I'm trying to kind of hold the gasket centered where I think it, it kind of centers up on all the studs. And this is just going to give me a visual reference to, to bring those ports out to. Typically you don't want to open up ports too much, especially in engines that are already designed as, as somewhat of a performance engine. Uh, a lot of head porting guys get into, uh, well not really head porting guys, but I guess novices, head porting novices. Um, they think that just opening up the port as much as possible is ideal. And just making it a big old, big old port. And uh, you know, on the exhaust side, it's not as critical because uh, you know you're just trying to get air out. Um, but on the intake side, you can definitely go too big. And uh, and one of the reasons is that I guess most really good head guys say that the ideal port is the port that is that is just large enough to not decrease velocity. So, so basically you're, you're bringing a port, you're shaping a port really, um, in a way where you're increasing flow and velocity without basically increasing the, the area so much that you start losing some of that velocity. Um, so basically, you don't wanna go too big. You know, some ports, could use opened up. I think that the the small port 18 18Ts are are uh, they're pretty small, but uh, those could probably be opened up to like the the big port style head. I mean, you could do the math, figure out the area of the valves and 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 when they're open and all that, and figure out the port dimensions and, and things like that. But uh, you know, going going by what the factory already figured out, um, I think that the the Big port head is probably more ideal for a performance application. Small port head was, was more designed for a, a torquey engine that's, that makes a lot of torque down low. Um, so they, they had a real, they obviously paid more attention to velocity than overall flow. Uh, but we're going for a performance application, so what we want to do is basically smooth things up and, and you know, without going too big. But, uh, you know, make things transition well, make things flow well, and uh, pay attention to some of the, some of the spots that might not, uh, you know, be, I guess, the obvious, the obvious. Like, uh, a lot of people work on the bowl, the bowl shape right behind the valve. Um, but what's funny is that the inside radius, the, the radius that cuts back right back from the, the valve on the bottom of the port, is actually more important than the than the outside radius, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, so we'll we'll talk about some of that, that stuff. But uh, basically, I'm just going to start opening these up. Uh, what I'm using is uh, a burr that's designed for aluminum, uh, so it's not the cross hatch design. Uh, it's got big big wide flutes, and uh, so I'm going to use this to kind of get the material get get kind of the general shape and then I'll go in and uh, using these these little barrel sanders I'll go in and finish the ports so 
as you guys can see, hopefully, I have kind of scribed my marks around there. You can kind of see them a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to start going to work. I'll see if I can set this up to get you guys a better view. Okay, so I'm kind of set up here. I've paid a little bit of attention to being comfortable. Um, I've got my tools here. Uh, I'm kind of using the cone-shaped burrs. I like those the best, the ones that kind of have a rounded side and kind of go to a little bit smaller point. Uh, they're a little bit easier to make things blend nicely. Uh, some WD-40 to help it keep from loading up. Once the aluminum gets hot, it'll start sticking in some of these these flutes and things. So you want to keep it lubricated. That'll keep the aluminum from sticking in there. And uh, basically, I'm just going to go to work. I'm going to kind of try to keep this this uh, burr kind of straight with the head flange, and then uh, and use the cone shape to kind of blend blend this uh, out to that that gasket diameter and without taking you know too much material out down in the port so off I go aluminum's terribly bad for you it uh it creates Alzheimer's and all kinds of stuff so a little bit of PPE is a good idea and obviously safety glasses Oh, one other thing is I put a little air restrictor on here so that I could adjust the speed of this so I wasn't having to uh, basically uh, half squeeze it the whole time. I can just go wide open and adjust my speed with this. Really helps. If you notice, I always keep the tool moving. You never want to sit in one spot because you'll end up really gouging out, gouging it out pretty bad. Uh, so you always want to keep that tool moving. Never sit in one spot. And uh, make sure you're comfortable because this stuff is very time consuming. So, I'm kind of got that roughed out. I left just a little bit before my scribe mark, so I had a little bit to clean up with the, the little barrel sanders. Um, but basically, you can see the scribe mark on that one, and then versus that one. So I've, I've got about 20 thou left, and I probably won't go out all the way out to touch the line. But uh, basically just trying to keep it, keep it real smooth. And you can see how that, that cone-shaped burr kind of makes it real easy to blend stuff. Um, so I'm going to do that to the rest of these. And then I'm going to start going back in with the, with the barrel sander. Okay, so my battery ran out. My camera shut off again. But uh, basically you got the, the gist of it. Starting to get the shape of those. Um, you can see I've kind of followed the shape of the port. Haven't haven't taken them out too much. Um, you can see on this in this water jacket here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see here. I don't know if you can kind of see in there. If you look at the port and look at the water jacket there's not a whole lot of wall thickness there so you definitely don't want to take too much out um, this port down here this first port 
I've started to clean up with the with the uh, uh, the little sanding burrs, the little uh, little sanding rolls, um, and you can see how easily that that cleans up and smooths up. Um, just basically taking the casting flash out and uh, you know smoothing it up and and trying to get rid of any high spots and and things like that. Um, but yeah, definitely you don't want to take too much out because that you can even see there's a bump here. I, don't, I think you can see that there's a bump in the in the wall there of the exhaust port because those water jackets are so close. So definitely don't want to take too much material out. Um, I will uh, keep working on this and. Uh, I'll have to charge up my camera, but uh, I'm going to keep working on it and, and kind of video the process and talk about some of the things we're looking for as far as port, sh port shape and things like that. Um, so I will continue this probably tomorrow. All right, so you can kind of see these ports are starting to come into shape here. Um, the bowls, let's see if I can show you guys. The bowls are starting to look pretty good. Now that bump that I showed you guys, I didn't take it out, but I smoothed it like a lot. Um, and I made, tried to make all of them the same. I actually ended up going back in there with the carbide burr and kind of smoothing out the, just the front edge of it. And, uh, so it, it's still there, but it's a lot more, um, I guess conducive to airflow. So still a lot of work to do on these exhaust ports haven't even touched the intake ports yet or the combustion chambers so you can kind of see how much work I'm probably I'm probably two hours into grinding on this head at this point and uh, yeah you can see that it's a uh, it's a lot of work but this is the kind of thing that puts uh, you know an engine builder um, or a hobbyist even uh, kind of these little paying attention to detail is what what will make your engine stand out from the rest and the performance of your car stand out from the rest so um, you know it's it's a bunch of work it's labor intensive but uh, pretty worth it so um, I'm gonna keep working on this and uh, yeah I'm probably gonna end up flipping this head over so that I can work on the bottom sides of the ports that I haven't really been able to see yet and keep keep going from there Okay, these ports are getting pretty close. Um, we talked for a second about uh, basically the inside radius of the port being a little bit more important than the outside radius. And that's due to the fact that um, the highest pressure area is on the outside of the radius, so the, the path of least resistance for the air is actually the inside of the radius. So um, you want to pay attention a lot to that the way that bottom of that port dives out you know, into, the, into the main port area. Um, from the from the uh, valve area here um, and it's really hard to get to that area when you're porting just because your tools are typically straight and uh, you can't really you know get over that overhang very easily so here's a little trick put your little uh, your little sanding roll on backwards um, and that, that'll give you a little bit more angle from the valve pocket side where you can actually kind of lightly go in there and kind of smooth up that radius. Um, so, yeah, just a quick little tip. Okay. So these ports are getting pretty close. Um, 
You probably have heard people talk about a smooth port isn't necessarily a port that, that flows well. Um, and the reason for that is that a slightly rough surface on that port uh, creates what's called a shear layer. And uh, basically it's a, it's a very small layer of air that's turbulent. And what that does is it kind of provides uh, lubricity, if you will, kind of a lubrication for the, the column of air that's flowing down the center of the port. And uh, so typically on intake ports, you don't want a totally smooth surface. Uh, that's why I'd like CNC ports where they're kind of have the machine marks left in them. And some of the hand ports you'll see kind of look like a pretty rough sandpapered surface. Um, that's for a reason and that's to help, help with the airflow and the lubricity of the airflow. Um, on the out exhaust ports, however, we have, uh, you know, carbon buildup issues, especially with street engines that run, you know, shitty pump gas. Um, so, in order to keep the carbon from sticking to the su surfaces of the, the port, um, we kind of want to make those as polished as we can. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a, now that I have these shaped pretty well, I'm going to go to a finer grit sandpaper on my little rolls. Um, and start kind of trying to smooth some of this up a little, a little better than it is with the, with the rough sandpaper. So, anyway, on to that. You can see how much uh, this finer sandpaper helps clean this up. So these are the two ports I haven't done yet. And these are the two ports I've been working on with the, the finer sandpaper rolls. Now these aren't probably going to get all the way polished out, but I'm going to make them pretty smooth and call that good enough. Um, it's just a street engine. I'm probably going way beyond what I should be doing for for the, um, the amount of power I'm looking for, but anyway, just wanted to show you guys how to do this stuff. Totally able to do all this stuff yourselves. Um, if you just take your time and, uh, you know, do your research and all that kind of thing. So, um, you know, don't be scared of this stuff. Just, just be careful and and, uh, you know, just get after it. I mean, that's the way all us guys that do this stuff for a living, that's how we did it. We just tried stuff until we figured it out. So don't be scared. Jump in. <laughs>